Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Healthy Cooking with Bronson. Today is it's Chef Isabel. Um, although I, I told um, Chris and Isabel earlier today in a meeting that I have now combined their names, they're Chrisabel. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call them at every time. Um, we are so excited to have you here on behalf of Region 4 Area Agency on Aging, the Campus for Creative Aging, and Bronson Health Systems. I am going to turn this over to our chef, and I'm going to spotlight her while she does her introductions, and then we're going to watch a cool clip. All right, Miss Isabel, you are spotlighted. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Cooking with Bronson. Um, today, we are going to do something really fun because our class today is about using holiday leftovers. Now, I don't know about you all, but whenever it comes to the holidays or actually any time during the year, we seem to have a bunch of leftovers. And so the cool thing about this class is we're going to learn how to turn those leftovers that you might have into something a little bit different. So to kick off our um, our show today, um, <laughs> there is a really great video that some of you may have already seen before, some of you may have not, um, of the TV show Friends. And it's a little clip that I think is very funny and perfect for today's topic. So I will let Amy show that and then we'll get started with our uh, cooking. All right, I am removing the spotlight and I'm gonna go over here to my screen share. And here we go. I'm gonna make this bigger and then I'm going to hit play so you guys get to hear the whole thing. So hold on. And here we go. Hi. Hi. What's wrong, buddy? Someone at work ate my sandwich. <laughs> well, what did the police say? <laughs> my Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. I can't believe someone just ate it. Ross, it's just a sandwich. Just a sandwich? Look, I am 30 years old, okay? I'm gonna be divorced twice and I just got evicted. That sandwich was the only good thing going on in my life. Someone ate the only good thing going on in my life. Okay, look, I, I have enough stuff for, for one more sandwich. I mean, I was gonna eat it myself, but... Oh, that, that would be incredible. Thank you so much. I, I, I still can't believe someone ate it. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I left a note and everything. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ross Geller's lunch. <laughs> Ross Geller's lunch who? Ross Geller's lunch, please don't take me, okay? <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go home wearing your lunch. <laughs> Okay, look, you want to hold on to your food? You got to scare people off. I learned that living on the street. You can stop it. Really? So, so what would you say, Phoebes? Stuff like, uh, keep your mitts off my grub. <laughs> say, Ross, when you picture Phoebe living on the street, is she surrounded by the entire cast of Annie? <laughs> okay, this will keep them away from your stuff. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Phoebe, you are a badass. <laughs> well, Sunday, I'll tell you about the time I stabbed the cop. Phoebe? What? He stabbed me first! <laughs> All right. Sorry, I, mean, I was trying to get you to shut it off after clip number one minute. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. That's all right. I figured that was where I just wanted it to end that scene. So, all right. <laughs> now. So, the whole point of that video was the... Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. So if you guys have seen that episode before, you know that the Thanksgiving leftover sandwich is a huge deal. So today we are going to be making a Thanksgiving leftover mashed potato cake with a cranberry vinaigrette. So we are going to make our cranberry vinaigrette first. And then we are going to make our mashed potato cakes. And the cool thing is the cranberry vinaigrette is going to be drizzled over these mashed potato cakes. So we are going to start. So for this recipe, what you're going to need is you're going to need cranberry sauce, olive oil, orange juice, red wine vinegar, honey, Dijon mustard, optional thyme leaves, and then some salt and some red pepper flakes. Now, no, if you do not have red wine vinegar or if you do not have any Dijon mustard, any type of vinegar works, any type of mustard works. So today we're going to be using red wine vinegar since I had it in the pantry and Dijon mustard since I had that in my refrigerator. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add 
a quarter cup of cranberry sauce. Now I do not, I do not like the canned cranberry sauce. I've never liked the canned canned cranberry sauce. Um, but, <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but this homemade cranberry sauce that I actually made last night is really good and it's nice and it doesn't have I, i'm not a huge fan of jello and the cranberry sauce that comes in a can reminds me of jello and so this does not remind me of jello so that's why i like it <laughs> so me too. we have a cup of the cranberry sauce and then we are going to add three tablespoons of oil and you can use olive oil or you can use vegetable oil or you can use canola oil whatever you have at home so we're gonna do three tablespoons of that. And I have to say, Isabel, I was very excited about this recipe after you gave me the the heads up what you were doing because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not a fan of cranberry sauce either. So it's like it's like it's it's a different thing. You either love it or you don't. <laughs> so that's just how it is. And I know there's people in my family that love it. And then there's people in my family that do not like it. And I fall into the do not category. <laughs> so we just added the olive oil and the cranberry sauce. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of orange juice, if I, which I already have measured out. We're going to add one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. It's going to come out kind of slow because I have the little, you know, stopper on the red wine vinegar. Like that. Throw that in. Okay. Then we are going to add two teaspoons of honey. It's already smelling really great. I mean, it's just, it's a lovely combination of flavors. A little sweet, a little sour, you know, yes. I think all of that is going to be great. And by the way, cranberries are kind of good for you, aren't they? They are. They are good for you. And this is what makes this recipe I already got some cranberry sauce on my on my shirt today. It's gonna be another messy day. All right, so we've got the honey added into it. Now we're gonna add our Dijon mustard, which is a teaspoon of the Dijon mustard or regular mustard, of course. That right in there. All right. Then we just have a few more ingredients before we can whisk this up and set it aside for our vinaigrette. We got the mustard. I'm not gonna have any thyme leaves in there because I didn't have any in my pantry. But of course, if you have some or if you like it, you can add it. And then I'm gonna add just a sprinkle of salt. And a teeny bit of the crushed red pepper grape flakes. I am not super fan of spice and so, we're just doing a teeny bit of the red pepper flakes. But of course, if you like spice, feel free to add more and more and more. And then we are just going to whisk this on up together. And this will just be our base cranberry sauce to drizzle on our mashed potato cakes. It's a beautiful color, an absolutely gorgeous color. So I'll show this to you in just a second. Well, it's got to be with those cranberries. I mean, I think. Yeah. No. Interesting. I I mean, did not have fresh cranberries, so I actually used frozen cranberries in my cranberry sauce. So you can use fresh or you can use frozen. So oh, that's this awesome. is the gorgeous cranberry sauce vinaigrette that we're going to put aside while we make our potato cakes. Beautiful. Yeah. So Amy, if you want to actually launch the game right now while I clean get ready for my mashed potato cakes that would be perfect the next one all right one more minute i had to uh unlaunch the game to play the video so here we go and i'm going to go share this screen now this one's going to require y'all to pay attention because as i said isabel she's getting good with her games now and she wants us to love our leftovers and so here we go so you get to look at this picture right now, a beautiful Thanksgiving scene, and we've got turkey and pies and veggies and fruits, and you're going to look at this for about five seconds starting now, and then I'm going to take it away. So here we go. Now we get a little break. Oh, Isabel, sorry, I forgot to mute you. Um, 
here's your little break where guess what you're looking at more vegetables and fruits just to be really uh, really tricky and here's our picture again except something is missing does anybody want to put it in the chat or say it out loud what's missing anybody know what's missing Ooh. Nobody. no but it's not a turkey <laughs> nobody's yeah it's not the turkeys there everybody's pretty well got it right well by the turkey also yeah that's yeah. what i was worried about okay here's what's missing okay this little tiny pear over here <laughs> i told you she's getting tricky with this one you guys so yeah and i do right. hidden figures and i mean hidden uh mm -hmm. things and i don't the hidden games and i this one is um, more of a, it looks more like a Christmas with the Stalin and the ham and the turkey. And maybe I think that's a duck back there in the corner. I'm not entirely sure. Bunch of seafood. So again, we're going to look at this one for five minutes or five minutes, five seconds. You guys will fall asleep on me if I left you here for five minutes. <laughs> and now we're going to give it a little break to the fruits and veggies i do love this image though your page break um isabel it looks delicious and you and said this was hard this i told you it would be difficult something's missing and it was what's down here in this little corner you can see uh, yeah out of my corner there was a uh, was it uh, a half apple half an apple all right let's see yeah. if jackie's right she was right. That was nice. our little yeah. half an apple. Yeah, good job. All right. Here's another one. This one's not quite as busy, but lots of fish selections. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks more like uh, Thai food to me with some green curry and some red curry and um, ginger and all the good spices. So maybe it's a Thai restaurant scene. I don't know. And we'll give it a gander. Now I'm going to give it a page break. And let's see if you remember what's missing. And what's missing is right here, this rectangle she put in right in here mm -hmm. between the ginger and the red curry and the green curry. Anybody? Not this time. All right, it was two potatoes, two little bitty potatoes. <laughs> All right, this one is definitely more, um, I'm gonna say it looks like more- uh, Mediterranean. Mediterranean maybe, I'm not entirely sure. You've got some persimmons and chocolates and some kind of potato pancakey thing maybe and a lovely salad, yeah. some beef, got some red wine. So here we go. Ready for your page break? Now, what was missing over here in this little corner? I picked the other corner. <laughs> Red wine. Red too. Oh, somebody said it. I think I think you're right. Red wine, Cynthia. It's the red wine. Actually, it was juice though, but I called it red <laughs> wine. So we're gonna call that a winner. <laughs> Good job. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. I think this is our last one. So this one is a charcuterie board with um, all kinds of meats and cheeses and pomegranates and fruits and veggies and grapes and I, this looks delicious it's one of my favorite ways to eat is to graze like this so <laughs> oh we do have one more after this okay here's our page break Ooh, what was right here between the ham and this little lovely tart thing i don't know i have no idea me neither all right let's find out it was the three little dips, sauces, that kind of thing. Yay. 
Um, I'd rather hmm. do the grains. You rather do the quizzes? <laughs> the grains. I'd rather do the grains. The grains. Bring back the grains. You're killing them, uh, Isabel. <laughs> okay. So here's yeah, this one is our last one. So you've got a lovely cake made out of cheese, which I think is very fancy. You've got another little cake down here. You've got um, cupcakes over here and a bunch of jars of things, maybe a ham, a turkey. This is looks like a terrine of all things, liver pate. Look, all right, here we go. Page break. What's missing? Cupcakes. Cupcakes, you're right. This one I said out loud. Um, so it is the cupcakes. Yay. All right. Nice job. Isabel, yes. that was a challenge, girlfriend. Yeah, but you can't <laughs> totally stump me. <laughs> <laughs> you have me, though, because I used to do those hidden games. Hidden object games. I love those. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm yeah, glad you to train your brain. It's a great way to kind of strengthen your brain. <laughs> you strengthened it already. It feels strange right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I thought all those foods looked really delicious. So I was excited to see the different types of foods and feasts from all over the world. So that's what I thought was kind of fun about those pictures. Yeah. All right, so now we are going to get ahead on our mashed potato cakes, but I wanted to mention a couple of things about leftovers before we started um, do putting together our potato cakes, because I think this is really, these things that I'm about to say are pretty important when it comes to using your leftovers. So um, one thing we really want to pay attention to when we're using leftovers is food safety. So um, I know Amy is working in school as a food service director, so she probably knows all of this already. <laughs> <laughs> I just been a few years. <laughs> I just want to share a couple of um, tips and tricks and everything to make sure that you stay food safe this year and all the time, actually. So. Um, as you probably know, bacteria and viruses can cause food poisoning, which of course can lead to upset sick stomachs. Um, you know, not great things. I don't know if anybody's ever had food poisoning before, but it's like getting the stomach flu times 20. And so food poisoning is a horrible thing to feel. I actually got it one time from chicken fried rice and I have not eaten it since. <laughs> so, oh boy. So, um, I had salmonella. <laughs> yeah. I, I had salmonella. That is horrible. Ooh, mm -hmm. it's, it is rough. It is awful. So the four steps that we want to pay attention to when it comes to food safety um, are cleaning, separating, um, cooking to temperature, and chilling promptly. So these are all coming from USDI, foodsafety.gov. Um, CDC. So these are all, um, you know, important things to be aware of from different agencies across the nation. So can when we say them again, can you say all four of those again? Yes, I cleaning. can. So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to these are the keywords: cleaning, separating, cooking to temperature, and chilling promptly. So when I talk about cleaning, what I mean is we want to make sure that we're washing our hands, we're washing our surfaces, we're washing our utensils and our dishes before we're cooking meals, and including when we are prepping leftovers and putting leftovers away. Um, so, so all of that is important even further past the initial, initial cooking stage. So when you're prepping leftovers or putting them away, you want to make sure that you're having clean hands, clean surfaces, clean utensils, and clean dishes. So those are your, your key words for clean. Now, when it comes to um, separating, you want to make sure that you are using um, separate cutting boards and utensils when it comes to cooking different meals, uh, including prepping leftovers again, um, but also uh, produce versus meat, which you guys probably already know, but always a good thing to talk about. Um, seafood, poultry, all different 
um, separate cutting boards and utensils or washing them in between. Um, cooking to temperature. So a lot of times we like to look at things and just assume that by looking at them, they're cooked all the way through, which is not entirely true. And I actually have a story about that. So um, a couple of years ago, um, so I, I love my husband's grandma. She's wonderful. Um, but a couple of years ago, we got into a little bit of a discussion because we, she was making the Thanksgiving turkey. And um, what it was, is you know how some of them have like the red, like, um, I don't know, like the red pop things that come up. Um, yeah, the pop-up timers. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we were cooking the turkey and we took it out of the oven before the red thing had popped. And um, she looked at it and she's like, oh, it looks done. Like, let's eat. And I said, mm, well, we should use a food, food thermometer just to make sure because there's a lot of us here. It's a big turkey, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so we put the food thermometer in and it had been measuring at 115 degrees. Ah. And so it was not cooked all the way through um, because it's supposed to be cooked to 165. <laughs> so it was not cooked all the way through. So it was, a good, I, it was a good idea to get that thermometer out instead of just looking at it. Because it might have looked like it was done, but it was only measuring at 115 degrees, which is way under what it's supposed to be. Wait. So using the food thermometer. <laughs> so that's the only way that you for sure can tell that food is cooked all the way through. Um, and then when you are heating up leftovers, you want to make sure that your leftovers are also getting heated up to 165. Now we could go into like all the details of what needs to be cooked to what temperature, but that's a lot of different, um, food items. And so if you visit foodsafety.gov, they have a beautiful food safety chart where you can see what different food items should be temping at what temperature for all the way cooked. And if you are all interested, I can send that chart to Amy at the end of this class and she can send it to you. So I don't know if you'd be interested in that, but I can do that for sure. That would be um, lovely. Then the um, last thing that I want to mention for these tips is to chill promptly. So we want to make sure that we're refrigerating our leftovers at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's super important that we refrigerate those food within two hours. And though the sooner that you can get it in the fridge, the better. Um, we want to make sure that we're putting our um, food into small, shallow containers so it cools quickly and evenly. So if you have this um, giant, you know, that of, I don't know, stuffing that you, um, you know, made for Thanksgiving, you want to put them into smaller containers rather than just one giant container because the smaller containers are going to make the smaller and shallow containers are going to make sure that it cools quickly and evenly, whereas the giant container might not cool it quickly and evenly. And so you'll have different spots that could be in what we call the danger zone. So um, making sure that your leftovers are getting cooked to 165 degrees and that your leftovers are put in the fridge within two hours, or if it's hot outside um, or inside, uh, one hour. So um, just to kind of keep that in mind when it comes to enjoying your leftovers. So those are just a couple of food safety tips for you. Um, I have a funny story about food safety though. When yeah, my well, kids were little, they used to think that I would say, now we have to go put the food away so that Sam and Ella doesn't come visit us. And for a long time, they thought they were friends named Sam and uh, Ella, <laughs> that they were gonna come visit us. And they could not figure out why I didn't want them to come over. <laughs> so they- <laughs> Yeah, we definitely don't want Sam and Ella to come and no. visit. <laughs> no Sam and Ella. <laughs> that is one, one thing, Isabel, um, is uh, how many days to keep left. So that is where that food safety chart comes in as well. So I will send that to Amy because, again, different foods have different um, lengths of time that you can keep them for. Like bread can last longer than, you know, your chicken dishes would. And so I can also send that food safety chart to Amy as well if you're interested in that. Um, that way you can look and see, okay, I have to eat, you know, this beef within this amount of days. I have to eat this, you know, fruit within this amount of days 
just to keep you all, um, you know, food safe. So I will definitely send that chart over to Amy, if that's good for you. Yeah, I always put a chart on the refrigerator to remind me how long it's been eating. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we move on? <laughs> no, but I have a comment. My friend, she had a, uh -huh. maybe you, we had a turkey you, off where I picked the turkey and she picked the turkey. Well, unbeknownst to me, she didn't take the gravy pack because it was frozen turkey out of the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It was a good thing I brought a I brought a twenty five pound turkey and she had the smallest turkey because oh she cut I it. I mean, gravy just went everywhere and it was it froze. Oh like my it. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is so. Oh my goodness! I I, the, I always check the cavity. You supposed <laughs> that is a great idea to check that for sure, but. The uh, Thanksgiving, um, you know, mishaps that happened are just so interesting to me. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. Okay, so we will um, get started with our mashed potato cakes and we'll share a couple other food safety things as we go through um, this recipe uh, with you all. So what we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to heat our saucepan up over medium heat and add a little bit of oil to the pan because we're gonna be sauteing some garlic and mushroom, or excuse me, some garlic and onions in this pan. So what I've got here is I've got my peeled garlic. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in my garlic press. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump that right in there to my pan. All right. It's gonna smell great in your house shortly. Uh, I love garlic. That's, that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to cook because it smells so good and tastes so delicious. I love it. Okay, and now, I'm gonna add my second clove of garlic. You can add more or less, depending if you like garlic enough. I love garlic. So these are actually kind of big cloves of garlic. So this is probably actually about, mm, I don't know, about two tablespoons of garlic. But again, your recipe so you can play around with what works for you. Some people love garlic and some people don't, but oh, and, I do. <laughs> when you change it to make it your own. And then I'm just gonna dice up some onion. I've already got half an onion here. Just gotta peel it, make it good to go. All right, I guess I probably should have waited to put the garlic in the pan, but I have my heat on pretty low. So I'm gonna go ahead, dice up this onion. All righty. Yeah, I can't and, wait to smell your house. <laughs> That's my two favorite flavors. I can't wait to see what all of this is going to taste like together. What I decided that I've needed over the past couple of uh, weeks is I decided I need a bigger working space. My kitchen is starting to feel very small. <laughs> so, Are you cooking at your house for the holidays? No, we're not. Um, we are going to my in-laws house for the holidays this time around. Um, so each year we kind of switch between his family's house and my family's house. And this year it's his family's turn to have us for Thanksgiving. Um, but we are going to have a super busy week next week because not only are we going over to their house on Thursday, but on Tuesday, I'm actually taking, um, well, actually Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm taking off um, a couple of days of work because we're going to go up to Frankenmuth. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. And it's actually gonna be like a girl's trip. So my mother-in-law invited me to go out with um, her and my two sister-in-laws. And so we're going to go to Frankenmuth on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I have an appointment that I have to go to in the east side of the state and so I'm taking Tuesday or Wednesday off as well so and then Thursday because of Thanksgiving and then Friday so it's going to be a short week next week <laughs> wow good for yeah. you yeah all righty so I've got the onions and the garlic in my pan so while we let that warm up and saute 
Amy, do you want to ask a chat question or a poll question? I would love to. Here we go. I am going to gonna do a poll question because you know we sort of haven't quite asked this question yet, and we really need to know: Do you guys like leftovers? So, if um, you are um, like me, it uh, um, you know, are you a big fan? My husband's a huge fan of leftovers. Uh, not quite so much so the answers are yes no or it depends on what the leftover is <laughs> so <laughs> um some things i think get better with time like chili the you, you know give that a couple days and that's delicious but um it's not that it's bad the first time but yes no or depends on what it is and and if you have not done this with us before what you need to do is just make your selection and hit submit and in just a second here i will um I will go ahead and um, get my um, get this uh, ended. So I will end it in three, two, one. All right, here we go. So it looks like this is a leftover loving crowd, Isabel. <laughs> so, yeah, well, with the chili, you can eat chili fries and you can eat chili, right. chili dogs. So, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I, right. and actually that's so cool that you guys all love leftovers when yeah. I was a kid I hated leftovers and I was like throw a fit whenever we said we were having leftovers and then as I got older I realized wow leftovers is great because I don't have to cook I don't have to buy more food like <laughs> now I understand why my parents like feeding us leftovers <laughs> so, I love them now <laughs> so all right, so we've got our garlic and our onions starting to saute in the pan. So while that is starting to saute, um, I just want to share a couple of um, different tips on how to um, keep your fruits and vegetables um, last a little bit longer, to keep them a little bit longer because, you know, leftovers are a great way. We want to make sure we're not getting sick. Um, so, of course, looking at that food chart to see how long they last for, but a couple of things you can do to um, lengthen the amount of time your fruits and vegetables are good to eat and have good quality are some fruits and vegetables are good to stay in the refrigerator. Some of them are better to stay on the countertop, but some of them can stay a little bit longer by going in the refrigerator. Uh, doing a vinegar rinse um, is a great way, especially for berries to keep them um, last a little bit longer. I don't know how many times I've had berries, I'll put them in the refrigerator and then the next day they have like mold growing on them. So the vinegar rinse is a great way to keep your berries, first of all, to clean them and then to make them last a little bit longer. Can you describe a vinegar rinse for us, honey? Yeah, um, so what I do for my vinegar rinse is half of vinegar and then two half of water and give it a little mix. And then what I do is I dunk my, you know, berries into this vinegar rinse for about 30 seconds to one minute. Um, and then I take them out of the rinse and let them drain on a paper towel. Um, so it's a great way to clean your berries and then also um, to let them last a little bit longer. We all know that it's really important to wash our fruits and vegetables. Again, going back to the food safety aspect. Yeah. Um, making sure that we're washing our fruits and vegetables before we eat them. And that even includes the fruits and vegetables that you don't eat the skin for. Um, so like an avocado, for example. You don't eat the skin of an avocado usually, um, but it's important to wash the skin with cool running water because when you cut into the avocado, the dirt and the bacteria and whatever else that was on the skin of the avocado could get into the fruit of the avocado. So making sure that no matter what fruit and vegetable you're eating, it's a good way to rinse them to make sure that when you cut into the fruit and vegetable that you're not going to be still eating that dirt and bacteria um, and whatever else might be on those skins. So just to kind of keep that in mind. Um, Very good point. I want you to know in schools, we washed every single watermelon, cantaloupe, all of it because you just didn't know where it'd been <laughs> and you didn't want it cut and, and given to those little people to make them sick because they're just as um they're just as uh, susceptible as older adults so exactly. you don't know where it's been you don't know who's been touching it so it's just mm -hmm. good um always a good idea to rinse those fruits and vegetables 
Okay, so it seems like our garlic and onion is nice and softened and sauteed now. So now comes the easy part, which is literally combining just all the ingredients. So what we're gonna do is in a bowl, we are going to combine the garlic and onions, which I'm gonna wait a few seconds to combine it because it's still pretty hot. This, this pan heats up really fast. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that last. Um, so while that's cooling, what I'm gonna do is I am going to add my two cups of mashed potatoes. These are cold potatoes, so cold leftover potatoes. And these are homemade potatoes, but you can use whatever potatoes you have um, at home. So I've got those in the bowl. Then I'm going to add crumbled bacon. So I've got two strips of cooked crumbled bacon. And I actually, bought the already cooked bacon and just got it nice and crispy because bacon is so expensive right now. Um, so that's totally fine. You totally use that. You can even omit or leave out the bacon if you don't want to add that into this recipe as well. So I've got the potatoes. I've got the bacon. I'm going to add my cheese. I'm going to add, which is the one cup of cheese. We're going to add a half a cup of flour. And this is gonna be getting cooked in just a minute. So we're not gonna be eating this raw in case you're wondering about the flour. We're gonna add a, the recipe calls for a teaspoon, but I'm only gonna add half a teaspoon of salt because all of us should be watching our sodium intake anyway. Um, and the potatoes already have some salt and the cheese already has some salt. And so I'm just- You got the bacon that already has some salt. <laughs> so a little bit less salt there. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of pepper. Go ahead and dump that all into my bowl. It sounds so good. I know it's going to be delicious. I didn't eat lunch today, so I'm excited about this. You know, I have to eat like a huge lunch before I um, come on these classes because otherwise I'm just so starving. I go binge when I'm done. <laughs> no, I need to start doing that. I really do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. I'm going to add my two eggs into my bowl. All right. Now I have egg on my hands, so I'm actually going to go wash my hands, Amy, if you have another um, cat or I do. And that's better than egg on your face. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> that was a dad joke. <laughs> All right. Since we've talked about this, this is, I would love to hear your thoughts on cranberry sauce. Are you a yay cranberry? a nay cranberry or a meh, you know, give or take cranberry. That's what meh means in my world. All right, yays or nays or meh. And in my family, cranberry has to come out of the can and have the lines on it when you serve it. Like you can't even cut it up ahead. They need to see that it actually is. I just don't understand. I make awesome, but you know, real cranberry sauce from scratch. And these people need to have it out of the can. So whatever, it made my life easier when I finally let that go. But probably uh, because it's easier to slice. Yeah, I know. I'm just, they, they had to have it just so. And I was like, all right, whatever. We okay, always did we'll, homemade until they came out with the can. Yeah, that would probably made life easier. So here we go. Let's see if this is a, looks like we have a cranberry liking crowd. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, more more cranberries than the nays and the meh put together. So that's good to know. <laughs> okay, so what I did now is I have added all my ingredients, including um, some fresh basil and some fresh, or no, some dried basil and some dried parsley. You can use fresh basil and fresh parsley, or you can just leave it out entirely. I didn't have any fresh, so I'm using dried. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give my bowl a nice stir to get everything nice and combined. The dough, the dough is going to be pretty sticky. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are putting this together. And like I usually do, I totally should have chose a bigger bowl, but <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Story of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every time we have these cooking classes. <laughs> I do it every day and my husband will say, so don't you think you should use a bigger bowl every time? And I go, oh no, no, I can make this work. Cause by mm -hmm. then I've already dirtied it and I don't want to wash something else. We know I don't like to wash dishes. So um. <laughs> well, at least she exercises. 
<laughs> yeah, you just got to keep working it. It's just a little harder. It is. You got to make sure it doesn't like spill over the bowl. Right. But okay. Not ready. Almost done mixing here. Okay. It looks like everything is nice and combined. Kind of looks hey. like has anybody ever had um like loaded baked potato? That's kind of what this looks like. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna tell you that when you put the bacon on top of it and the cheese together, that's what it remind me of. Yes, it's gonna be so good. Bacon and cheese together is a nice little treat to have. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so I've got my com combination all together. So now we are going to melt a little butter in the pan. Now you can, depending on the size of your pan, um, you might want to do this in um, like uh, separate batches, just so you don't have your pan overflowing. So I'm going to probably do two batches because this recipe makes eight potato cakes. And so I'm going to put four in my first batch and then I'll put four in my second batch. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to melt this butter into my pan. And if you don't have butter or you don't want to use butter, you can use oil, you can use margarine. Um, you know, lots of use whatever you have at home. So no, if, that you right didn't, if you're cooking them longer than I think you're going to cook them, you probably want to mix a little oil in with your butter to bring that smoke point down, right? Yeah, that's a great idea, Amy. Thank you for bringing that up. That is a fabulous idea. So I'm going to do that. Put too much butter. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of canola oil. So I will be right back. Right. While she's doing that, I'm going to ask another quick poll question. And let's talk about what is your favorite part of the holidays? Because here where the holidays are approaching, is it spending time with friends? Is it the food, the drinks, or the vacation time? We know that uh, Isabel is going to be on a little vacation time. This one's always... Um, an interesting one to me because I didn't put all of the above. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> you, I would have no, read that. So really, Isabel does all the work for these classes. I just type the questions in in the poll. And sometimes I like to mess with you guys and add a little all of the above or meh. <laughs> you know, some of them, I like to make them just a hair bit more fun. But this one, I wanted you to have to actually have to choose. So and this is kind of going how I thought it would go. So we'll give it just another minute. And here we go. And overwhelmingly, it is spending time with family and friends. Lovely. That is wonderful. Absolutely fabulous. Okie doke. So it is time for us to cook our mashed potato balls, cakes, whatever you want to call them. So <laughs> make eight different little sections. So I'm gonna, I've made like four different balls about this size and I just kind of throw them into the pan. And then this actually might make a few more. We'll see. I might've done a few extra potatoes to get them out of my refrigerator. <laughs> so then once they're in the pan, you are going to flatten them just a little bit to make them kind of more into a cake um, shape. So throw that into the pan, add a few more potato e mixture. And my hands are clean because I just washed them. So making sure we're doing that. Um, all right. So you are going to cook the potatoes on medium for about three minutes or so on each side. So I'm just going to flatten them a little bit, make them easier to cook all the way through to warm them up. And I do want to mention that the bacon that I use is already cooked. Um, just to make sure that you guys make sure to cook your bacon before you put it into this recipe. Um, we want, again, don't want to do the cross contamination. So now we're going to let this um, cook for three minutes on one side and three minutes on the other side. So I want to know, um, from everybody. So you can unmute or you can chat what your favorite leftover food is. It can be Thanksgiving, holiday, not holiday, whatever you want. 
uh, mine is chicken. One of the reasons why, because you can use it in salads and mix it in soups and, you know, whatever casserole. So mine is chicken. Awesome. Well, that sounds absolutely delicious. I have a stuffing in the chat too. I do like leftover stuffing. Oh, that's my husband's favorite and he only gets it around this time of year. So he's pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. Jackie, you're muted if you're talking to me. More things oh, there stuffing. Go. There you go. I, yeah, I like the cranberries because, you know, and I like to have them. I make my, I usually make them volunteer to make, make my own. And then I get to get to take home the leftovers. So you don't have those all the time. So those are kind of special things. And at Easter time, uh, we always have polo sausage, real polo sausage from a market that makes only polo sausage. And then you get, you have the leftovers and you just, you only have those at Easter time. So I think. Wow, yeah. that's a roast chicken in the chat. Okay, so mine is turkey too. Turkey dark meat. So you're either a light meat or a dark meat person. I am a dark meat turkey yeah. person. Just put me in the corner <laughs> <laughs> with a little dark meat, and I'm a happy girl. <laughs> <laughs> See, that is so interesting to me because I am the light meat turkey, uh, the light meat, which is so interesting because everybody always like pushes the light meat aside and I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take it. I do not like eating dark meat turkey. Um, my uh, my uh, family did a uh, an interesting Thanksgiving one year where we had turkey and then also duck and the duck was like, or some other, I want to say it was duck, maybe it was something else, but it was all dark meat and I just couldn't, I just didn't want a dark, dark meat. I don't like the taste of it, but everybody has their own, own chain, own differences, own right. tastes. Yeah, but See, you I love duck too. Faster with <laughs> the white meat, you lose weight faster with the dark meat, you don't. I, I, I don't know, I just think it's something about the taste or the feeling of it. I'm not sure, but of course it's got to be cooked just right because sometimes the white meat can be really dry so just got to be cooked correctly um if i had i mean i don't know if i can say this because i'm a health educator but my favorite leftover is desserts always desserts <laughs> yes yes you can say that because all foods always. fit yes exactly i always like to say that every food can fit in your diet so just making sure you have a balanced diet and then if you want ice cream or cake or pumpkin pie or apple pie that's totally fine because everything can fit into your diet yes. so all right so now i'm gonna flip my potato pancakes over they're starting to brown super nicely mm. just gonna look delicious <laughs> mm -hmm. good this one is struggling flipping over there we go okay I'll show them to you nice and crispy. Ooh, that one looks great. That one looks like you best. You can send me that nice brown one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, the crispier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's going to be like a French fry or like a hash brown kind of feel to it. So, so I'm excited about this. And I'm really excited to try the cranberry vinaigrette on it. Because the cool thing about these mashed potato cakes is when you want to... Um, serve them you can serve them with tons of different toppings that are optional of course but um chopped green onions low-fat uh greek yogurt salsa ketchup cranberry vinaigrette the possibilities are endless of what you can oh. drizzle on top mm -hmm. that sounds <sighs> great with a cranberry vinaigrette on there that would be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is everybody else doing um for next week's uh holidays anybody want to share what they're doing or where they're traveling to or if they're staying home and they're responsible or just skipping it entirely what is everybody doing anybody want to speak i hate to say this but i skip all man-made <laughs> holiday <laughs> thanksgiving i'll be thankful that i'm here so yeah. <laughs> i love it i love it anybody else yeah. I don't have to cook. I go to my daughter's because she loves to cook and I'm not so in love with cooking. So she, she's going to cook dinner and I'm grateful, thankful. Yeah, lovely. 
Fabulous. This is Jane, and I'm cooking, and I'm looking for chillings because there's no chillings in Ben Harbor. Uh oh. <laughs> if I find some, I'll let you know, Jane. Okay, thank you. But I'm on my way to Niles after class, so I can see if uh, there's any chillings up there at Walmart. Okay. So did you ever go to Martin's? They didn't have any more. Oh, okay. Thank you, though. Yeah. I am, I am cooking, and uh, my kids are coming. My husband is working because he's an airline pilot, and so he works all the holidays usually. But um, my foreign exchange student from about four years ago is in the U.S. in grad school, so he's coming. Oh, that's I think that so will be fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That is great. Okay. All right. I am going to remove. I'm going to let three of them stay on the pan because I think they could brown a little bit more. But there's one that is looking pretty beautiful. So I'm just going to flip that on right there. That side better. Then I'm going to drizzle a little bit of this beautiful cranberry vinaigrette on top. Oh man, my drizzling is not that great. You know, I'm not an actual chef, so I don't have like the, the plating techniques or the knife techniques, but we all like to cook. So that's all that matters, right? All right, exactly. and this is your curl oh. cake. Oh my gosh, that would be a whole meal, just a little salad on the side and oh, I would eat that for dinner all the time, <laughs> not just at the holidays. Yes, the fabulous. delicious. Do we have any questions or comments or anything? Yeah, um, when are you cooking dinner for all of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, at some point, I would love to do that at some point. <laughs> love to do that. <laughs> as soon as we get the COVID under control, we will talk <laughs> about that. Um, okay. Till then, you're just going to see us like this. <laughs> but that's a great well, idea. Well, you can ship so. it. All she got to do is send it in small containers. You could yeah, just, you food know, food. that's what she said. Small containers. Yeah. Ship it FedEx. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys cracked me up. Love it. All right. Um, it is 2.57. So, um, Isabel, any last comments? Um, Oh, Letty would like you to know you can freeze it. You can yeah. freeze those and she can fry them herself. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to wish everybody a safe upcoming week. Um, I can't wait to see you all again at our next class. And I hope everybody has a super fun and um, wonderful time this coming week. So wish you everybody- know. Right. You, know. you will give her the that calendar thing for us, that food thing. Yes. She's going to send nope. it to me and I will email it out to everybody okay. that was on the email list. So Are we going to get this recipe too? I did email it to you today. If you did not get oh, it, please let I me did, know. I probably didn't even look. Okay, yeah. check your email first. And then, because um, it's an attachment, sometimes it goes to spam. But and to anyone else, if you didn't get it, reply to the email where you got the invitation to, to today's event and wow. um, from me and say, I didn't get it. And I will send it to you along with the uh, food safety thing and and on that note, everyone, please be safe with COVID. Um, just to know that we are in Michigan here in a super high, super high blast of COVID right now. And I just want everybody to please be careful um, yep. and enjoy your family and have a lovely and safe holiday. And we will see you soon at the next one. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy my peace, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I <Yeah>. will. <laughs> okay.